Welcome to the Secret Sauce of Outsourcing Podcast that's dedicated to making you better at working with OFS, Online Filipino Specialists. This is episode 133, The Interesting History of the Barong. So the barong is this typical Filipino clothing, this this shirt that I'm going to talk about in a second. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about the clothes that we brought on our bike trip because I've had a lot of questions. So people like, I mean, what we just did is different and unique and interesting. I, I mean, taking seven of us, including little kids, riding bikes on a different continent for a month is different. How did you do that? How did you handle it? How did you take your luggage? Whatever. So let me talk about our clothes for a second. So first of all, everything that we had fit into a saddlebag. It's like this big, like that's everything we had for a month. And hopefully you can see a picture of it here if you're on if you're on YouTube. This is my wife's bike that's fully packed. The So the part underneath the saddle is all of our clothes. The rest of it, everything up around the bars was like food and daily use stuff or I kept our passports in there or drinks, everything else that we need, right? So in that, in the saddlebag then is... Here's, here's all we took. So we had three biking kits, which are like the cycling uniform, like the spandex. And we wore that because that's what we always wear when we cycle. And it's a little bit more efficient, which when you're riding 40 or 50 miles a day and it, it's windy, then it, that, that efficiency is a big deal. We had one pair of pants, one pair of shorts, two shirts, underwear, three pairs of socks, two jackets, a rain jacket and a puffy jacket. That's it. That's all we had, every one of us for a month, all of us have the same thing. It was it, it was it was really interesting and it was really actually kind of nice. Like you get you ride your bike all day, you you know what you're gonna put on in the morning, you're gonna put on your biking stuff. When you get to the hotel or the Airbnb at night, is it cold or is it warm? If it's cold, you put on your pants. If it's warm, you put on your shorts. Period. That's it. There's no choice. You only have two shirts, so which one's cleaner than the other one? Because one of them's probably dirty, and so you, you put your shirt on. And, and that, that decision-making or lack of decision-making was really kind of nice. The hardest part of it was laundry. We had to do laundry every three days, and that meant we had to find somewhere to do laundry, which isn't, isn't always super simple. Laundry is a, is a different thing in Europe than it is in the U.S. So while we're off riding bikes and not working for a month, the rest of the world is getting back to work, like back into the office now and back into suits and ties. So many offices in the Philippines have adopted like men's that wear suits, many, because it's kind of more of a formal culture there than in the U.S., many of them accept the barong still. So let me talk about the the traditional Filipino shirt called the barong or the barong Tagalog. So the barong is a lightweight embroidered shirt that's worn kind of the same way that we wear a suit in the U.S. So there's a formal barong, which is like long sleeve and intricately embroidered and kind of see-through, uh, it's a sheer shirt that's made from pineapple leaf and hoosie fibers from abaca, which is like a banana subspecies. It's what you would wear to like life events, like weddings or funerals. Wearing a formal barong can also be like a status symbol, especially if you got it from uh, like a high-end designer in the Philippines. Formal barongs are also worn like at red carpet or black tie events. Uh, even heads of state, like other heads of state, would wear a, a formal barong when they're in the Philippines at an important event. Uh, and this happens kind of regularly. Like the, in, this, in this picture, hopefully, that you're seeing is the, the Mexican president wearing a barong. So less formal than the formal barong would be a polo barong. And this is kind of typically what they would wear to work. It's short sleeves. It's simple. It has little or no embroidery. It's made from cotton or linen. It comes in various colors. It's too informal for like a wedding but it's good enough to meet with clients at work. And they also have a feminine version of the barong, um, often worn by like corporate executives or politicians. So wearing this kind of shirt really kind of makes sense when you think about the culture and climate of the Philippines. Nobody wants to wear a jacket, a thick jacket in the tropical climate. It's hot and it's it's hot, humid and muggy and Uh, the see-through thin shirt that's embroidered makes it formal enough to wear and yet it's more comfortable. Another interesting part about the barong is that this dates back to before Spain colonized the Philippines in the 1500s. The barong were worn that it would show your 
status in society, what you did for work, what part of the Philippines you were from, and what you what you did for a living. Like it it came they came in a wide variety of colors and sizes and shapes and different different styles that would indicate kind of who you were so other people would know. It's one of those distinct things about Filipino culture that that has lasted the test of time where a lot of things from in the Philippines are just very, very westernized. This is one of the things that has stuck around and they're still using it today.